Hi everybody, I'm Tim from Trout and Feather. You know it, we are talking about strike indicators today. Yes, we're talking about whatever you want to call them. I don't know, suspension devices, bobbers. No, not that kind of bobber. We're talking about fly fishing bobbers. You know exactly what I mean. I'm going to share my favorite ones with all of you today. Stay tuned. So what's the purpose of an indicator? Well, in my mind, it's for two reasons, at least the ones I'm going to show you. Number one, it's gonna indicate if a fish takes your fly, simple enough. Number two, we have to make a decision. Is it going to be a floating indicator, which could potentially suspend your fly and pull it out of the drift, or is it going to be a submerged one? Now, we're not gonna go into which one's better because it's really gonna be situation-based, but I'm really gonna focus on more of the floating indicators that I use now. Let's break this into three categories. We're gonna have kind of the average to indicators to use for heavy flies. We're gonna have more of a stealthy indicator. And then what about with Euro nymphing? Can you use those or is there something else or is it a mix? Spoiler alert, it's a mix. Yes, I love to Euro nymph. I'm using my 11 foot three weight right now. I have a brand new Euro nymph line, a micro thin leader, yet I still do use strike indicators. I have a whole pocket full of them because I'm not into competition fly fishing. I love it, just not for me. Instead, I'm gonna use these to indicate whenever I have a strike. Which ones am I going to use? Well, that's gonna depend on a few things. The speed of the water, the depth of the water, how heavy my flies are. Let's start with kind of like my two average strike indicators that I love to use. Probably the most popular one out there is called the airlock. What's great about the airlock is that it's biodegradable. It's pretty simple to use. I mean, you simply unscrew the cap, put your tippet or your leader through it, tighten it back on it's gonna be floating some really heavy flies as well, depending on which size strike indicator you buy. For me, I tend to go with those really small airlocks, as small as I can buy them. There are lots of different colors out there. My wife, Heather, she loves to fly fish. She loves this high-vis pink. Just suits her personality perfectly. For me, I tend to go with white because I feel like if I cast it out, fish will kind of see it, but maybe it looks like a bubble, maybe it looks like something else floating on the surface, maybe they're not gonna say, hey, Tim's trying to catch me, and they're a little bit more likely to catch my fish. Another similar style, and it's a newer strike indicator, is called the Oros system. I have links to all these down below in the description. The Oros is unique in that it unscrews in the center and you put your line or your leader directly down through the center and screw it back on. How's that different from the airlock? Well, it's pretty nice because with that airlock system, you unscrew the cap, and I have lost so many of those caps over the years. For the Oros, if you lose a piece of it, you're gonna basically lose half of that strike indicator. So, advantage Oros. But I can tell you with my own kind of preferences fishing over the last season of fishing both, I tend to still go with the airlock. I can't necessarily tell you why. I, I don't know, maybe I'm able to clamp it down a little bit more, because as I mentioned, I like to use a Euro Nymph setup. So where will I fish that indicator? Man, I will put that directly onto my tippet. So right now I have 6X tippet. Right where my leader transitions to my tippet, there's a tippet ring. So I'll go down like an inch into the tippet and that's where I'll screw down my strike indicator. Why do I do it there? Well, I wanna be able to lift all of my leader off the water. I have a micro thin leader that basically is a four and a half X leader. So I can make my cast out with my indicator. It's gonna plop down. I'm gonna to try to tuck cast it so my flies are gonna dive underneath it. My indicator is going to land. I'm going to lift my rod up. I'm going to have my leader going the whole way to that strike indicator, to that airlock. So now I can just float with that and my fly going down. But don't forget, your fly is not running directly underneath your strike indicator. So we have to space it out accordingly. As that strike indicator drifts, your flies are going to kind of crank up in the current a little bit. So they're going to be riding down. You can imagine them maybe at a 45 degree angle. If it's a really slow pool, maybe they'll be a little bit more centered underneath it. If it's fast, then they're going to be drifting a little bit higher up. So because of that, we have to say we need to space them properly below our strike indicator. A general rule is about one and a half times the depth of the water. So if I'm fishing water that's about three feet deep, then I want my strike indicator to be about four and a half feet away from the flies. Now I know you love to fly fish in the fall, but don't forget, like this video so I can make more videos like this. Now, let's get back to some more tips. Now, what if you're gonna say, well, wait, Tim, I fish water that's three feet deep. I have my strike indicator set to three feet and the fish are still eating them. That's okay. We're probably fishing for trout. And if you're fishing for trout, trout have a tendency to wanna look up. So as they see that fly drifting a little higher in the water column, they're gonna move up for it. But be careful as you kind of stretch out your indicator and you get that depth set, as it starts going further and further from your indicator, it's more likely to snag. 
So kind of keep that in mind that there's more variables and also that strike indicator is gonna be floating on the surface, which tends to go a little bit faster than the bottom. So does that mean it's going to pull your flies through that drift just a hair faster? Absolutely. So make sure you have a little bit of weight on them or add some split shot. If I decide to fish something really heavy, like a Pat's rubber legs, and maybe I want to drop a fly that's something like, I don't know, a Frenchie, that's great. I can fish those, but I may not be able to get away with that smallest airlock indicator. I may have to ramp up in size, get a, a larger size so it's not constantly being bobbed or pulled underneath. So make sure you adjust your indicator size based on the flies that you're fishing. What about if we want a stealthy indicator? Yes, they are out there. There are three favorites that I like to use. Let's start with the Ghost Tech Strike Indicator. These are made in Pennsylvania, my home state, which I automatically love. It gets a little check from me, but they are very stealthy. Whenever you cast them, they'll land almost splash free. That's a great thing. They come with this single pucker, this single kind of packet of air in a sense. They're really cool, and they have this stem and a little cap on them. If you look closely at the stem, that stem will have a little slit. You slide your tippet or your leader in there, screw the cap down, and it tightens it against your tippet. They won't move then you unscrew that cap and you don't have to take that cap off. You're not gonna lose it, unlike the airlocks. That's kind of an advantage to them. The Ghost Tech will drift multiple flies. I tend to use them whenever I'm fishing two nymphs. Can they fish, we'll say, that heavy Pat's rubber legs and heavier flies? Absolutely, but you have to add additional packets on top. They come with more in the pack so you can add those in. It's a great indicator, but just like all the others, yeah, there's a downside. I mean, go back to that airlock. When you cast it, that thing's gonna plop onto the water. What about this Ghost Tech? When you cast it, does it plop? Absolutely not. However, it can be a little bit tougher to cast. So you almost have to just power through your forward cast when you're casting those. They can be really difficult on a Euro Nymph setup. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind if you decide to go with the Ghost Tech, but I love to fish these and I've caught a lot of big fish off of them. If you look in my Stealthy bag, there are two other additional indicators in here and they are both yarn indicators. One's by Loon Outdoors and they're called Tip Toppers. I prefer the size small. And something else that I love to use is called this New Zealand Yarn Indicator System. What's great about these two is that whenever you cast this yarn indicator, it lands like zero splash free. They will still suspend flies. The downside is they're yarn. So they'll eventually take on some water. You have to dry them off, put some floating on them, but you can still move them up and down your line. So you can adjust the depth of your flies. And gosh, there's something that if I see like a big fish and I think it's rising near the surface, but I wanna get my fly suspended a little bit closer to the surface, I have two options. I can either grease my leader up until maybe a foot from my fly and that will help to keep my fly a little bit higher up or I can throw a yarn indicator. And those yarn indicators don't seem to, to really spook too many fish, especially steelhead. I love to fish Lake Erie and the tributaries for steelhead or you can call them rainbow trout, it's up to you. And those fish can get very spooky because there are so many fly fishers and fishers on the water. So if you decide to fish just a nymph by itself or an egg by itself, great. But there are times I wanna cast at distance with a Euro nymph style setup for steelhead. How can I accomplish that and keep my fly running in that same drift with a yarn indicator? Those steelhead don't seem to be as spooked with those yarn indicators because they land so gentle on the water and they really look like nothing as they're floating by those big fish. If you're into social media, be sure to use that hashtag trout and feather so I can see what you're posting about and I can learn basically where you're fishing, what you're fishing, the flies you're tying, all that fun stuff. Come on, where do you think I'm gonna get my future video ideas from? All of you with that hashtag trout and feather. But be sure to add trout and feather on whatever social media platform you use. I'd love to connect with all of you there. So let's bring the notion of stealth back into this. I told you, I love the Euro Nymph. Do I throw indicators on this? Absolutely. Can I throw yarn? Yes. Can I throw the airlock, the ghost tech? Yes, yes. I can throw them all. But there are times when we don't necessarily have to throw an indicator because as I mentioned before, if your flies are floating the same speed as the indicator, that's probably gonna be going a little bit faster than the bottom. So you have to supplement that with weight. More weight means more likely to snag. Maybe you're gonna get some false takes. Uh, so there's just some downsides with that. So when we're European nymphing, especially at a distance that's appropriate, we'll say 30 feet straight upstream at a little bit of an angle, even across the stream, I prefer to go with something like a micro thin leader. It will help keep my flies in their drift. But how do I know whenever I have a strike? Very simple. I have a couple different tools that I could use. One is this Honic bicolor indicator line. So this is two colors. You'll see a picture of it on the screen right now. And with these two colors, you'll see there'll be like a slight sag as I'm kind of carrying that line towards my fly. 
Whenever that sag kind of tightens up and goes into a straight line, that could be an indication that there's a fish. So I don't need to throw a bobber all the time with them. Other things that some Euro nymphers love to do is whenever they tie, the, we'll say their leader to this bicolor indicator or their indicator line, they'll use a blood knot, but instead of clipping it tight against the knot, they'll kind of leave these like little bunny ears sticking out. And those bunny ears are great because they'll kind of turn. And whenever you're leading your flies through that drift, if those bunny ears turn or jump up or jump down or do something unnatural, you set the hook because hook sets are free. And then you may have seen something else in my hands and you're probably wondering, is that chapstick or lipstick? No, this stuff is called neon wax. I'll put a link to this down below. And I love to use this as an indicator as well because sure, I have this indicator line that I've already told you about, but there are times when my tippet might be five feet long. So if my tippet's five feet when I'm Euro nymphing and I'm holding my tippet and my leader out of the water, what am I gonna look at to see if I have a strike? Sure, I can look where my tippet inserts the water, but sometimes there could be kind of a goofy angle, a little bit of glare on the water. That's where this stuff comes in. You simply take off the cap, slide this onto your tippet, paint your tippet chartreuse, hot orange. There's a bunch of different colors out there, and now that is kind of taking the place of your indicator system. Say you move to a deeper spot. Now that's in a bad location, simply wipe it off with your bandana, smudge it somewhere else on your tippet, and you are good to go. So these are two really stealthy options. And come on, you know I love stealthy options. My two most popular jig nymphs out there are called the sneak attack and the stealth mode. I mean, come on, this is the stuff that I love to do. So there you go. We're done talking about bobbers or strike indicators or suspension devices. I mean, what did I forget? I hope somebody mentions the Pat Dorsey system. It's another great system, uh, it relates to the yarn system, but I'm sure there's a system out there that you're using, maybe the balloon system. But if you do mention another system down below in the comments, be sure to tell a little bit about it and in what situation will you use it. For me, most of these situations involve Euro nymphs, jig nymphs, maybe small streamers. I typically won't use that indicator system if I'm using a dry fly. Wait, stop everything. What about a dry dropper? That is one more indicator system we didn't talk about yet. Say I'm using my Euro nymphing setup. I probably have a leader that goes the whole way to my tippet and my tippet goes down to what we call point fly. Maybe I'm gonna fish a size 16, a size 18 sneak attack fly. What about the dropper tag? So I have a dropper tag off of that. I can throw on some type of heavily hackled, a lot of CDC, a lot of foam, some type of a fly that's going to be one that's going to float really well. That's my dry fly in this dry dropper setup. Now that I have a dry dropper set up, I can make my cast. I'm gonna let that drift for anywhere from three to five seconds. I'm gonna watch my dry fly. That dry fly, I'm not relying on that to suspend my nymph, but I'm relying on that to tell me if there's something going on with my nymph. Years ago, I used to tie my dropper fly off of the bend of my dry fly hook. I thought, hey, this works out really well until I transitioned to barbless hooks. Once I went to barbless hooks, I hooked a number of large fish on that nymph and it simply just kind of worked its way off of my dry fly around the bend and it came off and I lost multiple fish because of that. Once I realized that, I said, no more, I'm not going off the bend. I really don't prefer to tie through the eye of the dry fly either because if I wanna make a change to that dry fly, I then have to change both. So I've gone with this dry dropper system where I tie my dry fly off of the dropper. If I tie it off of that dropper tag, that allows something really important so the fly is chasing me. And what that allows is the notion of this kind of independence between the two flies. So imagine I have my dry fly here. It's off a six inch tag. I have my dropper, we'll say 20, 25 inches below it. They can both kind of do their own things. They're not gonna be playing this tug of war as they drift through different currents. And that's very important because if the two of them are connected like a direct connection and one is drifting off this way, it's going to pull the second with that. But by having them kind of running on their own systems, you have that independence. You're more likely to kind of use one of those flies as that indicator to say something's going on. And then don't just think that dry fly acts as that bobber for your nymph. Those fish will eat that dry fly too. Another great system. Thank you so much for watching, but the fun's not over yet. Guess who's already recorded some reviews of the indicators we just talked about? Me. And you benefit from them by clicking this thumbnail right here. You can thank me later.